Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today, we're going to uh, kind of provide an update on the activities of the committee that are looking into the events of the 6th. Just kind of piece some stuff together. Some of the stuff that we suspected has now been confirmed. And we're just going to kind of lay it all out and see where they're at and what's going on. Um, Representative Jamie Raskin said that Americans would be shocked and surprised to find out what the committee has learned. I don't know that I believe that. I don't know that that's true. I think most Americans know what they saw that day. Most Americans have a, have a pretty good understanding of what they witnessed. And even if they're not 100% certain, it has certainly entered their minds. I do not know that they will be shocked or surprised to uh, find out what was behind the event that Raskin himself described as the unleashing of mob violence to intimidate the vice president in Congress, overwhelm and stop the counting of votes, and provide a pretext and context for Trump to potentially intervene with military force under the Insurrection Act to put down the uprising he himself had helped to organize. For those... Uh, at home, <laughs> that's a really good description of a self-coup. Um, we also have the reporting from uh, Woodward, which talks about a conversation that took place between Trump and Pence. And Trump is really pressing him, trying to get him to overturn the election, trying to get him to agree to be part of the, the team here. And uh, Pence just isn't having it. By, by the reporting, Pence is like, yeah, this isn't happening. You need to figure out how to talk about losing it. I'm just there to open envelopes. I'm paraphrasing, of course. Uh, in response to that, Trump, and I'm not paraphrasing this, Trump replied with, no, no, no. You don't understand, Mike. You can do this. I don't want to be your friend anymore if you don't do this. The former president of the United States, the president at the time, whining like a toddler trying to get his way. Um, Pence didn't budge. Pence maintained his uh, position. It uh, has also been confirmed that Grisham, the press secretary, the former press secretary for Trump that we talked about last week, she did. She walked into the committee hearing and was like, yeah, you need to talk to this person, this person, this person, and this person. You need to talk to this person about this thing. Gave them all kinds of names and gave them lines of inquiry. This is the uh, former press secretary who indicated that former Trump officials are currently working on some kind of maneuver to ensure that former President Trump never gets his hands on the levers of power again. It does seem like those uh, statements that she made uh, were genuine. They were backed up by what she has told the committee. We also found out that the committee was, in fact, talking to uh, lower echelon people. I think they described them as second and third tier or something like that. This is going to be incredibly damaging to the, the major players. People who are powerful and who believe they can get away with something like this, they're incredibly arrogant. They tend to not notice the help. They tend to not watch what they say in front of them. Those who are lower level, um, they appear to have, they, they're cooperating with, with the committee. They're telling them what they know. And these are people who were asked to do functionary things in furtherance of the plan that, that was apparently in place. We also found out that the committee... Uh, the committee subpoenaed the, the pillow salesman's phone records. At least that's the claim. Um, 
And this is something that, that kind of leads into something else. While that in and of itself isn't surprising, um, it, it, it adds to another conversation that's going on. There are a lot of people who are kind of looking at DOJ like, what are y'all doing? What are you waiting for? Right now, the committee provides a lot of cover for DOJ. They can get records. They can do all sorts of things without raising the alarm. Um, and without causing people to uh, lawyer up. Because at the moment, it's a political thing. And a lot of the people involved are, well, they are arrogant. And they may believe that this is something that they can just talk their way out of in front of the committee. If it stays that way for as long as possible, it gives DOJ a lot of uh, leeway. It's a possibility that that's what's going on. We don't know that, though. Um, it's also worth noting that in an investigation like this, what's going on is how it should look. We're just not used to seeing that. We're not accustomed to seeing investigations run the way they should at this level. There's not supposed to be leaks. You're not supposed to find out everything that's going on. There shouldn't be a play-by-play. -play. Um, it, it appears that everything is going according to the way it should, which is surprising. Actually makes me a little uneasy, to be honest. And the committee has definitely expressed interest in, in talking to Vice President Pence, talking to Pence directly. Um, and it appears that the, that the committee believes he's going to be a pretty cooperative and favorable witness. Raskin said that he has a lot to be proud of and that he was a constitutional patriot. He stood up for the Constitution. Talking about Pence. Um, and I think, honestly, I, my gut tells me that there is more to that statement than just the quotes we have from Woodward. I don't think it's just Pence telling him no that night. I think there might have been more, uh, more behind that quote. Yeah, sure, just doing what, what the Constitution kind of outlines the vice president to do on that day. Yeah, that's... But that should be what's expected. You know, I don't know that that alone would rise to calling somebody a constitutional patriot and saying they have a lot to be proud of. That's kind of, it should be, the expected bare minimum, even with the amount of pressure that he was under. I think there's more to that. And I, for one, cannot wait to hear from Pence. As we uh, get more and more information, it doesn't actually appear that the systems that are designed to thwart this type of behavior from somebody in the executive branch is really what stopped it. It seems that we got lucky. And in certain positions, we had people who were inflexible people who were going to stand their ground. And they were in positions that could uh, alter the outcome of perhaps using the military or refuse to provide political cover to a maneuver that is not in the spirit or the letter of the Constitution. It, I think it's... Uh, important to acknowledge that a lot of this was luck. A lot of this was luck. It wasn't that the systems themselves defeated this attempt. There were individuals in the right spot who maintained their moral compass. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.